Welcome to Recovering Addict. I'm LT. I'm Alcoholic Addict. How's everybody today? I'm Felice, married to this handsome guy right here. And Mama, that handsome boy right there. And I'm Link, child of these two. Child of these two. <laughs> child, we have, we have multiple personalities. Maybe you are childs. Huh? All right, here's the week's end. Sunday. You may have the Monday blues and tomorrow may be a Monday that you don't want to go to, but you know what? We were blessed to have a great day. Get an extra hour of I can't sleep if you're in the United States or at least in these states over here with the time change and all. Um, did you guys complete it? This is an answer for yourself. If you've completed our challenge, which was the same one from the week before, going out and doing something nice for nobody and resisting the urge to brag about it. And the reason we do this is because in our addiction, we are completely selfish, right? And the first thing we want to do if we do something nice is to go talk about how amazing we are because we just did something nice. In our addiction, we're always selfish, right? Me, 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 gimme, 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 drugs, 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 whatever it was, right? And so it's to break that battle inside us to be that selfish person anymore. And when you do something nice for somebody and you have that desire to brag about it, you have found where the battle ensues right there. That emotion, that desire to have everybody look at you, have everybody applaud you, pat you on the back. And it's just a selfish thing. It's just a great place to find the battle and, and start fighting this war on addiction because it's a lifestyle change. Everything must change. If nothing changes, what changes? Nothing. Your sobriety date. <laughs> <laughs> right? Happy Please. birthday, Mo. Oh, happy birthday. All right. I love it. Today, we're going to get into our book called Staying Sober. I'm going to read this first little paragraph real quick while everybody's logging in because we're going to talk about the role of compulsive behaviors, compulsive behaviors. We all have them. We all had them and we all still continue to battle them, right? Compulsive behaviors are actions that produce intense excitement or emotional release. And are followed by long-term pain and discomfort. Woo, got to have it now. Give me that truck. I don't care how much is it. Woo, 19% interest. But I'm looking good today. You know, I've done that. I had a motor home. I've had some other stuff that I've done that with. And then the long-term pain kicks in. Dang it, I have to go to work because I have a payment to make. Um, you know, and it could go for any type of compulsive behavior uh, that you can think of. These behaviors can be internal. All right, so write this down if you do take notes here. The behaviors can be internal. These compulsive behaviors are inside thinking, imagining, and feeling. Or they could be external, working, playing, talking. You ever just said stuff right out of the blue? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, why did I say that? Compulsive behaviors make you feel good in the short run, but weaken you in the long run. Weaken you in the long run. That's what we do not want to do. So we're going to go through this book today in depth on compulsive behaviors. We're going to hit the questions from the Discord. We're going to talk about a new challenge I got set up for this week. Ooh, and it's yeah. all about getting comfortable being uncomfortable. And this is the best challenge I have ever heard of. And I have found it just recently. And it's, it's amazing. I love it. So stay tuned for the new challenge coming soon. Then we'll finish off with this book. <laughs> and right now I'm going to let Felice say what's up. Hello, everybody. Let me start at the top. Let's see who was the first to arrive. That would be Michael Teeter saying hello to Amanda. Oh, we have a vote. We got to have a vote. Yes, here's the vote. We're taking a poll tonight. Tacos or bread? But to be more specific, Teeter's tacos or LT's bread? Please put your votes in and I'll count them later on in the show. But I have to show pictures. I can't just have a of a poll without pictures, right? Yeah. So if you are on the side of Teeter and you think that the tacos are the best, Teeter's Tacos? <laughs> that should be a truck. Teeter's Tacos <laughs> should be a truck. If we ever do a taco truck, that's what it's getting We're going to call it Teeter's Tacos. <laughs> or the bread. LT's bread or Teeter's Tacos. <laughs> You decide. <laughs> oh, uh, it says Brad first, but this is telling me Teeter first, so I don't There's believe it, Brad. friend who live stream says at the top of his show, it's time to get uncomfortable. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It is. Let the adrenaline rush begin. What's up, Cherie? <laughs> Hello, Jim Hartley. Are they vegetarian? What's tacos? Up, 
Probably not. Happy birthday, Bo. Ditching the drink. Hello, everyone. Great oh, hello. Name. Welcome. Glad you're here. Glad everybody's here. Amanda Thanks Cook. She likes dreams. Amanda. Asia's like here. <laughs> What's up, up Asia? Drew? Asia Drew, you JV. freaking island boy. Good evening and good morning <laughs> or good afternoon, wherever you may be. And welcome to another edition of Recovering Addict. Yeah. What's up, Big Hump? Big Hump in the house. Woo. I still am waiting for some stuff, Hump, and I will send you that care package. <gasps> this is pretty cool. Tree oh. says, just a heads up, Eric Kamergatic. Will not be running the wellness Zoom this week as I will be at the protest. Good for you. Stand yes. up for what you believe Stand in. Stand up for what you believe in. However, if anyone was interested in attending my virtual, I could run Zoom from the March. Yes. You should anyways, so we could jump in and see what's going yes. on. Yes. Because that'd be super cool. That would be amazing. But remind me, because I'll forget. Fridays, right? Friday day? Uh, we're at the gym at that time. Well, we'll figure it out. We'll, figure, we'll tune in. Because that's super cool. Oh, man. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. That was all of me. Patrice, what's up? Good to see you here, Tracy. Lovely lady right there. Glad you're here, Tracy. Link with a heart face. Thank you, PD, always with the share squad. We love it. If you like what you see, share us out. Hell's Kitchen. Yes. NYC 999. Oh, What's up, my dude? Uh, Asia, I feel What's like you're Carla? biased with that vote there, bud. Geesh. It was good seeing you the other morning. Yeah, Saturday morning, Geesh. That was amazing. I'm glad are you, you were there. Are they vegetarian? Michelle said no. burn out. The bread's probably vegetarian. Is it? It's a tacos. Boo. Brandon Jerome, you are very absolutely welcome. Very, 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 very much. And that's what that type of comment gives us the encouragement that we we need to be encouraged too. We're just people, right? Getting on here every Sunday night. Thanks, and Brandon. Trying to, you know, share the message, give people a place to tune into so they have at least an hour on a Sunday night to you know get refreshed, get encouraged, spend some time sober and and learn a couple tools and tricks. If you stick with us tonight, you're gonna learn a some stuff about compulsive behavior. We're going to answer some awesome questions from the Discord and talk about some good things. And we are going to set the new challenge for the week. And it's about getting comfortable being uncomfortable. That's right. Don't go away. Welcome, Michelle Hapel Levine is here in the house. Paul Some Sosa. What's up, Paul? Your name's cool. Paul S. He's a suit. He's a What's up, Debbie? Go Giants. Tacos. I'm seeing some tacos here. Figure it out. Can we have a moment <laughs> of silence for Buster Posey retiring? Sheree says she'll do it. Yes. That's all? Yes, we are doing well, Patrice. Oh, What's Buster, up, Morgan? we will miss you. Oh, yeah. Silence. Morgan. Hey, Sky. We, we got another one for bread. Thank you, Carla. I made <laughs> well, it today. Can't taste the bread. The tacos were good. <laughs> 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 well... The bread's good. You take my word for it. <laughs> so what is this whole thing about, right? Why is LT making pictures of bread? I have been preaching for the last month and a half to get out and try new things, right? You got to get out and try new things. And my whole point behind that is your next thing you try might be the passion in your life that sets you off onto a whole nother level of living. And you, you just never know. You got to go out and try stuff. So I've been telling people, go hiking, go exercising, <laughs> go mountain biking. And... We went to a, a ice cream place down the street a few months ago, and we decided to make our own. I'm like, we can make that. So we yeah. just made some waffles, ice cream, and peanut butter. No big deal. I wasn't really thinking about it like I am right now. Fast forward to, to, to now and been watching Linky cook, and there's this, whole, there's this honey whole wheat bread that we always buy. It's like five bucks a loaf. I'm like, God, this stuff's expensive, it's but it's the best bread you can buy. It's delicious, right? I'm like, I'm going to figure out how to make that. I figured it out. Figure it out. So I looked Oops. online, came up with the recipe. Found a recipe, gave it a few tr attempts last week. I think we're this is our third batch that I tried making here. Every time it's improved. <laughs> um, this one turned out really good, so I had to take a nice, beautiful picture of it. But I tried something new, right? I got into the kitchen. I read some stuff. I mixed flour. I waited, and I put it in the oven, and then it came out, and I tried it, and I learned new things. You know one thing that really it's teaching me about bread making? And it doesn't have to be bread. You can make anything that's out there. We followed Steve's recipe, Steve Thanks, from Exodus Steve. Auto. His, Check him out. His live stream yesterday at four o'clock. He taught us how to make Chick-fil-A chicken. 
And we've made that two nights in a row now. It's really good. And it's got me thinking. I'm like, you know what? We don't have to go to a restaurant to go get our favorite foods. We can actually make that stuff right here for a quarter of the cost. So now I have four loaves of that honey whole wheat in my cupboard for a fraction of the price. Not only did I have fun, I learned, I'm saving money, and it's good healthy food. And on top of that, it's teaching me one of my huge, my most my greatest character defect, and that's impatience, right? Mm-hmm. You mix the bread, you have to wait for the yeast to do its job. So I had to sit there like, come on, you. And I'm standing there just looking at it, just looking at it. I'm like, I got to go do something else. I can't just sit here and watch bread rise. So I go do something else. I come back to the second part, and you have to let it rise like three times. And so it's teaching me patience. And after making this loaf and watching some educational stuff, I realized I'm not letting it Set long enough. Thank you, Paul Hollywood. Paul Hollywood told me I'm not letting my bread (laughs) set long enough. So guess what I have to do? I have to be more patient in this endeavor, which is amazing stuff. So try something new. Did LT clean the kitchen? Well, let me tell you, I was going to get to the cleaning part of this, right? There's so much time in between stuff while you're cooking that you clean. My grandma always taught me (laughs) LT clean as you go. And so I kind of, when I do that kind of stuff, I keep that as my motto. Clean as you go or make the kids do it. Yep. (laughs) That's what made me laugh. This guy said, sorry, I haven't been here in a while. Been busier than LT at a two for one vape sale. (laughs) 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 It ain't no lie. (laughs) I was like, that's a good one. That's That's a good one. Pretty oh, great. Oh, <laughs> keto lemon cheesecake. <laughs> Two for one face. Share. Now. Seriously. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, go ahead and see what these <laughs> friends of ours have tried. Wait, this is a pilot from your new food network project. No? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a, what you, what you call them, John V? It's a shameless plug. It's a shameless plug to something that may happen. <laughs> <laughs> In the future. <laughs> but I'm serious. Try something new. Like cooking was the new thing I tried. And you know what? I liked it. I, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to, next time we're at a place and I'm like, I like this food. I'm going to figure out how to make it. Next one we're going to figure out is Zupa Tuscana. Or yeah, we'll just have, Aunt, where's, whatever. where's Aubrey? Angela, make us some soup. I also made some uh, sugar cookies with my grandma today. Yeah, Winslow, Arizona. This is Margo. I hey, Margo. Graduated the rehabilitation program from Fountain Home over six months sober. Baby. Woo! Woo! Three, six, 90 days. Dang, I don't have yeah, a yeah. Uh, No. We have Check a cool dog out. tag, though. We have cool dog tags if you were ever interested in getting one. Connect with us and we will let you know how. Six months. <gasps> Warm bread does soothe the soul. It just smells so good. Yeah, big time. I wish I could smell. It was fun. And you know what? Me and the kids were in there together. Actually, Xylan and Link were making the chicken, the, the Chick-fil-A type sandwich while I was cooking the bread. None of us were on our phones. Our hands were too dirty. And we're laughing and having a good time making food. It was awesome. Family, good fun. <laughs> Who would have thunk we'd become recipe swappers? Right? We're like the old grandmas now. Love it. I would love to do a cooking show, says Tracy. Tracy will do the keto stuff, and we'll cook the bread. There we go. Uh, Get her done. Get her done. Get her done. What you got? You talk to him for a minute. I always talk. Did you ever get the RA hats in stock? That's on my to-do list this week, and once I get them ordered, it'll be a couple weeks because it's a whole process, so they're about a month out, and then I will have... At least, my goal is to get at least 150 hats. So there will be plenty. There's going to be a gray one and a black one. Like this. They're actually going to be... No, not that one. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we had to try a couple different styles. But they'll be this color and that color for sure. So that's where I'm at with the hats. And then I'm also going to restock us up on some hoodies. I'm going to get a little bit different brand. And some more of the silver dog tags. And per request by multiple people, we're going to get a purple dog tag that says multiple years on it. So it'll be like that one, but the back will say multiple years. Yeah. For all y'all that have over one year, because congratulations to you. That's amazing. That is amazing. Anytime sober is amazing. I love what Morgan, Morgan and I kind of coined a phrase in our last video of the Halloween thing. 
about service. Time spent serving is time spent sober. And obviously, if you got more than a year more, you're out doing some type of service and you're, you're staying sober. All right, let's get into a little chunk of this yes, book and then back. we will hit the question of the discord. And the topic right now we are talking about is compulsive behavior and the role it plays in us addicts because abstinence from drugs and alcohol is not recovery. <laughs> a lot of times, a lot of like dang near all the time nice, and we Paul. all seem to learn the hard way in this situation when we get sober is we remain abstinent from drugs and alcohol, but we've jumped to compulsive behaviors. Un the horrible decisions, right? It says many people who are recovering from alcohol or drug dependency attempt to substitute compulsive behaviors for the use of addicted drugs. For some, the result is the development of severe compulsive behaviors that can interfere with recovery. Not good. They can interfere with your recovery because if we're doing compulsive behavior plus uh, short-term gain equals long-term pain. The long-term pain is going to increase our stress. We end up giving it the F word and boom, we're using it again, right? Remember the addictive equation. Oh, look, it is. Pain plus alcohol and drugs equals immediate play pleasure plus future pain. You guys remember this little equation here? Think about it. Take a snapshot and, and just kind of meditate on that. Pain plus alcohol and drugs equals Immediate pleasure, yeah, right now it feels great, but it's going to cause future pain. Future. I like that. Me too. When a person comes to rely on compulsive behaviors as a substitute for alcohol or drugs, the equation changes to this. Pain plus <laughs> compulsive behavior equals immediate pleasure plus future pain. So you can replace this alcohol and drugs with compulsive behaviors and the outcome is the same. Interesting. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. What's up, Amelia? Glad you're here. So we're going to group the major compulsive behaviors into eight different types. We're going to look at eating and dieting. Okay. Uh. A compulsive behavior into eight different areas of your life of possibilities of compulsive behavior. Write this down. Number one will be eating and dieting. And what does that mean? This includes compulsive overeating, compulsive dieting, often called anorexia, and the combination of compulsive binge eating followed by a compulsive dieting or vomiting, right? Bulimia. So eating disorders, compulsive eating and dieting, and it can be on the other side of the scale where bodybuilders keep looking in the mirror and they're just not big enough, no matter how big they get. Um, the number two could be gambling, the compulsive need for risk. Number three, working and achieving. I'm a workaholic. You've heard that term before, right? The compulsive need to keep busy, accomplish th accomplishing things, or excel at everything done. I have to excel at everything done. What's wrong with that? Apparently, there's a problem mm, with that. Well, maybe that's a little compulsion I got, right? Go ahead. Uh, Jim has a joke for Link. All right. What goes up and down, but never moves? Mm. We're at the mercy of Jim on the answer for that one. Uh, glad to be here. I'm at work. So if I go off, it's because I'm busy. Well, thanks for being here. But Amelia. glad you're here. I like that name, Amelia. Ooh. Yeah, things just got real up in her. <laughs> <laughs> you're in very much gangster mode tonight. Slash. I got it. Uh, what's that Canadian show with the Larry Letter Kenny? Letter Kenny. <laughs> Your age. Your age. Goes up and down, but never moves. How does it go down? That's a good question. <laughs> oh, oh, are you ready? Oh, just kidding. It's on both screen. <laughs> I, oh, I, like I tried to cover it, but it's on that screen also. Steps. Thank you, Jim. That's funny. Put that one in your notebook. Number four on our list is exercising. The compulsive need with the steps. to stimulate the body through physical exertion. I found two that I think I'm, I'm creeping in on here. <laughs> I have to excel <laughs> at everything I do. I have to. And then exercising. I do need to get out and stimulate my body through physical. Is it really that bad? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> it's okay to not excel at everything. We rested yesterday. We did. 
Uh, number five was on the it, list. But was it really hard for you to rest yesterday? No, I was pretty tired. Yeah, I wanted too. to, but my body said no. <laughs> and I just was like, eh. <laughs> um, sex, compulsive behavior here. The compulsive need to have sexual experiences. You know, that nofap.com. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, thrill seeking, compulsive need to experience intense stress or thrills. Uh, number seven is escape, the compulsive need to avoid the daily routine of life. I got, I just got to escape. I just got to get away from this. Just let me, just let me get out and get away. Which I, a lot of these, except for the gambling part, I wouldn't agree with, are are good in balance, right? But we're talking about compulsive behavior. And spending, the compulsive need to buy or acquire possessions. So we got eight we're going to look at tonight, right? Eating and dieting, gambling, working or achieving, exercising, sex, thrill-seeking, escape, and spending. Hmm. Good ones. Uh, Gish is... Oh my gosh. Leslie! Questioning the stack of scratchers, I was about to check. <laughs> <laughs> what is always needed? Balance. Balance. It's very true. You know what gives you balance? Yoga. You realize you don't have any when you try it. Oh, check out on What's up, Leslie? Go ahead. What's on, Go John? Ahead after you ditch this one. As you said, compulsive behaviors. I definitely say I've gambled more than the usual since I stopped drinking. Interesting. Gambling can be very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. We have somebody in here who has a broadcast called The Venture Forward where he talks about that, which is a great segue into his board. He keeps track of all his numbers because he was overweight, he was an alcoholic, and he was a gambler. And he's been sober and clean from all three of those addictions. 995 days tracking food, 892 days sober, 574 days not gambling. If you want to maybe just, you know, think forward and ask questions and learn, and, and you probably already know, but John Ventura, Venturini, Johnny V, the guy in right there, he is, uh, ask him, tune into hit one of his streams and comment about it and he, he will give you all the education you need on gambling. Dad, you probably didn't realize it. If you want to look forward, go to the Venture Forward. Ah, if you want to look forward, go to the Venture Forward. Shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> the Venture Forward, because there's John no better way to see the future. Show. <laughs> well, we're going to find John a tagline tonight. <laughs> 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 Eating disorder. John is a superstar. Hello. I think gambling has its place sometimes. My family gambled a lot when I was a kid, but nobody was fun. ever in trouble for it. It was just fun family get togethers. I never liked it. I hated it. What's the difference between compulsive behavior and obsession? I thought I was just obsessed with some things. That's a good question. I guess they kind of go hand in hand. It starts as a compulsive thing and then i'd have to i'd have to think about that and look into it some more it seems like obsession, obsession you have is. thought about it all the time yeah whereas compul just... compulsion there's no thought whatsoever you just do it <laughs> <laughs> that would be my that answer was <laughs> awesome all right real quick let's jump into this moment in time Today's Discord question of the day. Actually, there's a few of them Ooh. right here. Let me see if I get over here. P.I. Rich Boy says, P.I. Thank you for the comment, Rich Boy. <laughs> Kitty245 <laughs> says. <laughs> Shout out to Rich Boy. <laughs> Kitty245 says, love of pets. I have three bearded dragons and a jackapoo. What's a jackapoo? A jack... Russell, Russell, a poo. Doodle poo thing? We need, we Something need a poo. with a poodle. She Probably says they bring me great joy 
on a hard day and they help my recovery by helping me deal with stress. I agree. We have two pets. I have a big dog and a little dog and we love them. Love sleeping with them. We lo- well, not the big one, just the little <laughs> one. He she she jumps in bed and snuggles. The other one's too hairy. And John would have to agree. Here's JV again. He says it's amazing what a small kitten can do to tell us that we are doing awesome and what they are doing for us is invaluable. Much better than the support of <laughs> King Taurus. Can cantankerous triceratops? Can cantankerous triceratops? Who thinks he's cantankerous? A cantankerous. Yeah. And John obviously takes this little dude traveling. <laughs> That's not a T Rex. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> ah, Jack Poo, Jack Russell toy poodle. We were super close. Oh, if not nailed it. Really? Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, our little girl. Where is she? She's sleeping. Ours are back here snoozing. I'll show you it to you in a minute. Uh, well, not, not, not you, Millie. We're talking about the puppies. So Jim has a pretty good hard question here, a, a hard situation that he's experiencing. He says, I just found out that the guy that I have been trying to help has been playing me for a dang fool. Yeah. Them's, them's are fighting words. <laughs> I thought the reason he was still drinking was me failing him with support and suggestions found out he is only pursuing sobriety because it's a term of his probation. I think it's time for me to part ways because of the way him failing started to make me feel. When do I pull out of these situations for our own good, man? That's a good question. Let's dive into that one for a second. It's like a turning back doors. That is, it's hard because you get emotionally connected to their sobriety and how do you guard yourself in the in the spirit of step 12, right? Or going to AA meetings or venturing down that road of getting into recovery and actually working one-on-one with people and becoming a peer support where you're helping multiple people. And how do you not get your emotions wrapped up into that? It's very difficult because one, you end up falling in love with the people, right? You want to see them succeed and time and time again, they fail and fail and fail. Every time it's a pin prick in the heart, you know, and enough pokes in your heart, you're going to bleed out. I get it. So how do you put a shield of faith on there? And you, you almost have to take the Allen on approach and realize that you're powerless. Their steps are the same as ours and approach it in that manner. I can only give them what I know and it's up to them what they do with it. As sad as I will, will be, if they decide to go down that path, I have to part ways. And the way that I've done it with my experiences over the last few months to a year is I don't hang out with people that do drugs. I have a group. I have my own consciousness, and if it starts affecting that cohesiveness of a group in our connection, even here in the Discord and on YouTube and Facebook, they got to go. You know, it's like okay, you got to go. You just you cannot enable them to continue to <clears> use <throat> you as an excuse to pretend like they're in sobriety when they have no desire to do so. But if this person is sober. Is, if he, is he still drinking or is he completely sober and you just feel like he's going to drink after he gets off? It sounds like he's still drinking. Right? Yeah, but trying to quit because of his term of probation. Boundaries. That's right, John says. Mic check. LT's mic dropped. What? Can you hear him now? I like Sheree said, detach with love. That's always good advice right there. Detach. Hmm. LT, mic check. What's up, Brad? If you have to make the walls strong and tall, I do concur with that as well. Weird. Why did it go to loop back? I will delete you, loop back, if you do if you do that again. Better. They said better. Okay. Hey, Brad. Real quick off topic. Did you get your package or did you call the post office? I called. Hopefully they're looking. If you haven't called and got any information, I will send you some new stuff starting tomorrow. I will get in the mail tomorrow. Sorry for the huge delay, brother. So protect yourself, boundaries, balance, help when you can. If the person stays sober long enough, it gives them a good chance to hopefully think clearly. Um, But protect yourself first and foremost. Next question. Next question. How do we find, this is from Geesh, one of my favorite dudes up in here. How do we find and develop friendships in our life after addiction? Great question. 
I've managed to meet so many great people and start many friendships with people online through my recovery, but in my normal day-to-day life, I feel just as isolated as ever more, right? If not, if not more so. If not more so. Uh, brother, you got to get out there and put yourself in new situations. You got to get, it's like dating. You, if you're, you say you're single, right. And you want to find you a girl, think about the type of woman you would want in your life and where that type of woman may hang out. What kind of friends do you want and where would they hang out and just show up? This is going to be uncomfortable. You walk in. I don't know for me that, that kind of stuff is I I don't know. I've, I've tried new things so many times and I learned this young and I'm so glad I learned it young. And that was to get out of my comfort zone because now my comfort zone is very huge. Like rarely do I get uncomfortable with things, walking into situations, talking to people and just try, it doesn't matter to me. Right. So figure it out. I don't know. Like just examples, go to the coffee shop Instead of going home to do a Zoom meeting or read a book, go to the coffee shop and hang out for a little bit. You may bump into somebody and start a conversation to make a friend. Uh, go hang out at Harbor Freight if you're at Tool. I don't know. Go to AA meetings and see if there's anybody you connect with. Get on that app called Meetup, and that's not a dating app. It's a legit, awesome, like meet meet people that like to do the stuff you like to do. Put yourself out there. Yeah, if you play sports. I know a girl we know plays sober softball. Yeah. Get she involved in a finds community. Finds a lot of friends that way. Yeah. Maybe there's a chess club you could bu- get involved in, a book club. I think it all goes back to that: trying new things and find out what you like outside of your addiction, and then find friends that do the same things. And you got to remember, it doesn't happen overnight. You got to just continue. It's like making bread. <laughs> you got to let it rise. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Michelle's going to hang out at the library. Good for you. Yeah. You want to meet smart people? I mean, the birds of a feather flock together. We hear that all the time. Show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. You want to be smart and intellectual? Go find and hang out with smart intellectual people. You know, you want to be an entrepreneur? Go find and hang out with the entrepreneurs. You want to be a golf master? Go hang out the driving range. You know, what do you want to do in life? Figure out where those people hang out and go and get involved. Take your family, take your kids with you. I do it all the time. I always venture off to new places. What did I tell you today? I bet you didn't think we'd be doing this. Oh, my expectations or something else. Yeah. Like I have none. <laughs> I, was like, I bet you didn't think we'd be doing this today, did you? She's like, well, why don't we go with you? I don't expect much. Like, I, I don't think we're going to stick to the plan kind of thing. I just go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads me to, bam, the next challenge, if you choose to accept, which you must if you want to change, because this is a good one. Right after this message. Just kidding. We don't have messages. So do that, brother. Um, Can I hang out with billionaires? (laughs) Yeah. Knock on their door, bud. Try to figure it out. You want to be a millionaire? Go hang out with the millionaires. And it takes the time. You got to work your way in there and they'll start Shmee giving you their secrets the on boss. what they do. I like that, Brad. Buccaneer. All right. Here's the new challenge. <laughs> Stop me if you heard it. Stop. Hammer time. In the name of love. Anytime you, you go to the store and you purchase anything. Anytime you have an over-the-counter transaction with anybody over any product, I want you to look them straight in the eyes and ask for a 10% discount. Okay? You're at Starbucks. They put their coffee on the table. You're about to pay for it. You say, can I get a 10% discount? And you don't say a word. You don't say, I'm doing an experiment. You don't say, I'm doing a challenge of the week. You let that uncomfortable emotion bubble. In in my sales world, it would be called a it'd be called a silent close, right? You let that emotion and the first person to talk loses. <laughs> exactly, Michelle. Exactly my Does point. Does this count online? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's better person to person because you get that awkward feeling. You get those emotions of uncomfortableness. Do we care if we get the 10% discount? No, that is not the point of this, of this, uh, what do you call it? Exercise, Exercise. right? 
being uncomfortable and getting comfortable being uncomfortable is the point of this exercise. Wowza. And guess what? Seven times out of 10, you're going to get a discount. It's a win-win situation. Look at it this way. <laughs> you, you start learning how to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Two, you possibly get a 10% discount. And if they say no, oh, well, you learn how to accept it. Three wins right there. You must do this challenge this week and do it often. Don't just do it once and be like, that was uncomfortable and don't ever do it again because that's the point of this challenge. Ask for a 10% discount no matter where you go. You'll be surprised at how often you get it. Uh, Teeter, Michelle said to leave your cart pending and awkward. <laughs> I don't do the trick. <laughs> I think I think we got it. <laughs> I love it. But don't you, none of you ask us for 10% off this merch. Dr. Phil says everything is negotiable. Everything's negotiable. Everything. <laughs> Geesh, I'm going to ask for 50%. You're not going to make friends. <laughs> <laughs> Geesh off the top rope. <laughs> Brad wants awesome. to know if you've been watching Gary V again. <laughs> yes, sir. Where do you think I get all this stuff? You think I just make it up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't do anything new, y'all. I don't I don't try to invent reinvent the wheel. I take what I learn, I put it into practice experientially, and then I come and bring it to y'all. I don't want temper software merch. I just want my merch. Uh, it's on its way, I swear. Okay, willingness challenge accepted. Yes, and that's another thing. So that's four wins. Willingness to do the challenge, getting comfortable, being uncomfortable, possibly getting 10% off, and and the chance to Accept a no, right? Yeah. Acceptance when they tell you no, and it's okay. And you'll learn to you'll learn. It's it's fun, actually. I did it. I did it this week at GNC in front of Dan, in front of his new employee. <laughs> that was awkward. <laughs> that was funny. I'm like, can I get a ten percent <laughs> discount, bro? And I just looked at him, and he was like, oh. It looks over at Dan because Dan's his boss. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny them. watching them squirm. You'll get to the point where you don't squirm anymore. You just watch them squirm and you just kind of enjoy it. <laughs> I have some places you have to say no. Yeah. But still fun to ask. I would still ask. But like Starbucks, uh, restaurants, a lot of places can give you discounts. It's it, It's possible. And I'll bet you at 7-Eleven, you got some little button you could you could push to drop the price a couple cents. Sweet. I'm excited to know. Um, another thing I want to see is if you noticed, I did this real quick. Um, you talk. <clears throat> Michelle, I'm cringing. Just thinking about it. That's my oldest boy's favorite word. Cringe. cringe. It's cringy. cringy. Everything's cringy. Teeter says, I do sales at Lowe's. You'll be surprised how many discounts I give out, but still make the sale. Add a boy. Yeah, ask Teeter for 10% off. Going to Lowe's. We have me some 10% off. For sure. Heck yeah. I love it. All right. So check out what I did. A lot of you have probably already seen this, but I'm showing off a little bit and all that kind of good stuff. And, um, two things I want you all to do this week, and this is for your recovery. Okay. What the heck? Oh, I have to do the Chrome tab, huh? Chrome tab. All right. Let me share this real quick. Boom. But you see what I did here? I tried something new, which was making bread. I said, try new things. Okay. I'm learning how to make bread, honey, whole wheat. What I learned. Homemade bread is the best. Learning is fun and we save money. Now here's your other challenge. Two challenges this week. Your Try turn. something new and post a picture on Facebook, on our Facebook page. Show us what you've tried and tell us what you've learned. Okay. Two things. Everywhere you go this week, can I get a 10% discount? And when you try something, you take a picture of yourself doing that because that's trying something new. Post it. Let us know what you've learned. This is going to keep your mind by trying to accomplish these two challenges this whole week until we see you next Sunday live here, this is going to give you something to think about other than drugs and alcohol 
This is going to get you nervous and out of your comfort zone, right? Two tasks, write it down. 10% discount, try something new, post it on Facebook. Rochelle says, I honestly think it will be the most uncomfortable 10 seconds of my life. <laughs> you would hate to be in public with me, Michelle. I would, uh, I would make you feel so uncomfortable probably. Making you better to. humans. It's very true. I'm trying to. Come on, LT. One challenge at a time, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> Brad got 10% of me liking him back. <laughs> Paul says, can you put that in the discord? Yeah. Post it in the, yeah. Facebook or the discord. Either one, <laughs> either one, whatever you prefer to choose to use. Just okay, let us know how it was. Taskmaster. <laughs> Five challenge November. Five challenge November. All right. Let me think of three more. <laughs> <laughs> no worries post it in discord brother no worries leslie was thinking the exact same thing <laughs> I want to know the comments on this chick. all right look at linky's little crazy trick come up here and do it <laughs> that's pretty trippy, that's pretty trippy it's for sure trippy all right what do we got to say we got to say don't what replace you your addiction that? and your alcoholism with compulsive dis e compulsive eating, gambling, working, exercising, sex, thrill-seeking, escape, or spending. Did you guys write all those down? I hope those are written down. Dave nearly lost his family because of his marijuana use, and he did not lose them because of his compulsive running. He went into treatment for his marijuana addiction when his wife and children moved out. They agreed to come back when he agreed to get treatment. As a part of his recovery program, he began running. He set a goal of running three miles a day, three days a week, as soon and soon attained his goal. But 121. He was not satisfied. He began running every day. Before work, during his lunch hour, and after work. His family, expecting him to enter into family life now that he was sober, was disappointed to discover that he was seldom around. He was entering races and going from place to place for the competition. On days that he did not run, he was restless and irritable. His wife didn't appreciate his regular comment. Well, at least I'm sober. This is that dry, drunk, stinking thinking. If you don't change the dry, drunk, stinking thinking, the only thing's going to change is your sobriety date. She decided that this type of sobriety didn't give her much more of her husband than she had before. She had left. And this is an example of how other compulsions can cause problems in the same way that chemical addictions can. You dig? Uh, glad you tuned in there, Margo. Good night from my end. Much love. And I'm glad I was introduced to you guys. I'll be keep watching. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks thank you. Very cool. Share us out with your friends. Aren't you him? <laughs> what? Encore, Linky. <laughs> Do it one more time, bud. Pay attention, Shree. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, snap. The only thing that's going to change is your sobriety date. Damn, someone heard that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Does his name start with a B and end with rad? Be rad. <laughs> <laughs> Be sharp, be flat, or be nothing at all. <laughs> Michelle, hmm, maybe I could do the link illusion with my 10 seconds of awkward. <laughs> Can I get a 10% discount? <laughs> please, please get that on video. <laughs> Share with the world. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, Brian. The link illusion. <laughs> the link illusion. Firefighters can be swapped. For one another, it's when we can learn how to remove the compulsions and start caring and loving ourselves mm -hmm. in a healthy manner. That's when we truly heal. Love it. Oh, think does it better. I do it good too. I don't think so. Hey. What did that book say about being good at stuff? Oh yeah, there <laughs> I am trying to be a master of stuff. Damn it! <laughs> I, got, I got a drug problem for it. Working at the bank is an ungrateful job. For instance, today, an old lady asked me to check her balance. 
So I pushed her over. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she was not very happy. She huh? was not happy. She was not grateful. I got fired. I got to pass the torch to you, bud. Good job. Wouldn't wouldn't want to pass oh, it to a better guy. Says. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, how would you all control your compulsive behaviors? I guess I got to. I don't know. What is my compulsive behaviors? <laughs> I still get angry a lot. I still get irritable a lot. What? Why do I get so irritable all the time? I get into like this work mode. Like if I'm trying to do something, I don't know. I get tunnel vision on it. And when outside noises and interruptions, I'm just like, rawr, rawr. yeah, fix that. I don't know how. Probably just chill. Huh? Um, hey, Jim. What? Jim's going to bed. Oh, good night, brother. What did Teeter said? Right here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right teaching rat illusions and making us better humans amen yeah good night jim love you brother um let's look at character defects before monday as well okay take note calculate how was your weekend and and what are you going to work on this week to get better at things uh today how are you as far as patients go I got to learn, I made bread today, so I got to learn that I need to be a bit more patient. And that was a little more trial and error. Um, I felt the compulsion to be impatient because I wanted to cut it. Like it says, let it chill completely, you know, before you cut it. And I wanted to cut it and I was just staring at it. So I was like, I'll go take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> good job. Way to beat it. Did good. Uh, procrastination. Um, laziness. What about criticizing? Hmm? Criticizing? False pride, self-importance, self-condemnation, dishonesty, inser insincerity, self-justification. What have you been justifying lately to do your bad habits of any kind? Self-pity, jealousy, envy, vulgar or immoral thinking, destructive anger, resentment, negative thinking, and daily, and then you score your daily points, right? Take a screenshot if you want that. And we already have it. It's on the Facebook page at group and it's in the Discord the as well. Discord again. Yeah, if you're not in the Discord, jump in there with us. It's not a race. You're right. It's not a race. We are not in a hurry. Recovery is something we have to be patient with and just do it a day at a time. Then we look back on our day and say what worked, what didn't work, and let me fix that tomorrow. And you just keep making these small goals. That's why I put that in the Discord about the goals I did it, just so we can make little small goals. If you do this 10% off discount challenge, drop it in there. Say, I did it. I've been asking for a 10% discount. And then let us know the results. Let us know if you do get a 10% discount or not. Let us know how you felt about it. Uh, so keep us posted in the Discord on how you're doing with this new challenge of posting it. You know, I got to think that goes with patience. What? Yesterday was the past. It's gone. Tomorrow's the future. It's a mystery. But right now is a gift. And that's why they call it the present. Attaboy. Attaboy. Love it. I've learned that this sloth has turned into a phoenix. Amazing what nearly a thousand days will do. I heard the phoenix sound in my brain. Yeah, that high pitched. Yeah. Very cool. John, you are an amazing human. So proud to know you. Amen to that. Me too. Uh, so the time has changed here in Utah. Normally, it would be 949 right now, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we fell back. Boo. So, That's why everybody's going to bed. It's 10 o'clock where you guys are. Everybody's tired. Like, why am I so tired? I get it. Or I get it. normal time, I guess, for you guys. I'm very anti daily. Which savings. one was it? Was that football one? I can't remember. Way to go, John. Tracy says. Okay. Tracy. Hey, Tracy. We're going to ask for 10% discounts everywhere we go. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> What's the next thing we're doing? Painting? Painting. Hopefully we get a bigger discount. Local That'd group. If you're in Utah and you're watching this. Sunday the 27th? Nope. Or Friday the 27th? Maybe. 26th or 27th. It's One on of the Fridays. Fridays. 
one of the Fridays, this upcoming next two weeks, we're going the to- The 26th. 26th. Friday the 26th. We're going to meet in Farmington and we're going to do our little painting. Whoop, whoop. It is going to be cool. Uh, daily meetings in the Discord haven't been very popular lately, but that's how it goes. Sometimes they're full. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're full. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes I'm around to drop them. Sometimes I'm not. And that's okay. But the option is there. Let me show you if you ever want to drop a meeting in the Discord. Let me show you how to do it. Okay. I'm going to share the screen. Show you what's up. So I'm going to make this full screen so everybody can see. Hi, Crystal. Full screen is not. That's half screen. I don't like it. I wonder if I did that. If it would make it better. Hey, look at that. All right. So I'm going to zoom in over here to the left. And if you were on your phone... You could zoom in or just swipe over to this left side, and this is what you would see. The main, oh, look at that. Merck's freaking recovery coach. So cool. Uh, here's the main text chat, right? You scroll through here. This is where we chit chat and talk. Come down here to the scheduled Zooms. In this scheduled Zoom, there is a Zoom link right here. You are more than, more than willing. This is my Zoom account, and I give you permission to click in here anytime you want and start a meeting in this recovery discord take this copy it if you want to do it this way come up here to the main text go right here hit at everyone say i need someone to talk to drop that link just like so hit enter And it's going to ping everybody who has their notifications on and they can join you in this to chat any time of the day, any time of the night. Um, that Zoom is available. There's also this on here, too, where if you jumped into here, you could join right here face to face with people in the Discord if you don't want to do the whole link thing. Right? Right there. Yeah. So that's how that works. And you all are more than welcome to do that. You are welcome, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> 24 hour recovery. 24 hour recovery. Anytime you need it. Uh, just, it, there's no excuse. The Discord, there's no excuse. With Facebook and all the other groups you probably belong to, they're all awesome. Ooh, yeah. Jump in there. Just a reminder. For all the Utahs in the middle of the night when you're struggling, we got the people in Australia. The people in Australia in the middle of the night when they're struggling, <laughs> we got the people in, in Utah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Millie punched the wall again. For the third time tonight. <laughs> so now that that link is dropped, I believe, Brad, did you still want to have a late night Zoom? Because huh? that link is there in the Discord, and I dropped it for everybody. So this is a great segue to the ending of this. Bro uh oh. We'll take some serenity in a couple uh, minutes, there, JV. Yeah. We have people in this family from all over the world. You have follow the sun support and love rooting you all the way. We truly recover better together. Amen. Hey, Sha, Millie, flowers. God, God. grant me the serenity to, to accept, accept the things we cannot change, change the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Amen. Thank you, JV. Yeah. Hello. All right, y'all. Until next Ooh. week. Where does this hate us? We recover better together by staying safe, staying sane, staying strong, and staying sober. You're worth it. Good night, family. I love you all. Make sure you guys check out the Venture Forward. It's the best way to see the future. <laughs> um, <laughs> good night, Paul. Um, don't forget your challenges. Any over-the-counter transaction, ask for a 10% 10 10 discount and remain silent. Number two, try something new. Take a picture and post it in one of our discords or Facebooks. Let us know the progress, what you learned, and how you feel about it. Until next Sunday, do not put yourself in a high-risk situation. Stay strong. Have a wonderful week. wonderful week. Work your programs. Stay in recovery. <laughs> I totally forgot my end line. <laughs> Where's the T-shirt?
And remember, we, we recover, recover better, better together. together.